so the Sienna 1000 FD here at about 50 bucks as opposed to the $250 Stratic as opposed to the $1000 Daiwa Exist what are the differences what's up guys shroom on the grass today I didn't go for a fish this week so it's going to be a very different and hopefully special video guys I'm going to be going through my brim fishing combos all that and more coming right up this is a good time to probably explain the differences between cheaper and more expensive top of the line gear are we really getting a lot more out of our expensive combos like this one here as opposed to the very affordable sienna try on combo here and you know of course these combos don't reflect everything on the market there's a there's a lot of preferences and personal feel to this to this as well so here are my thoughts regardless so first up let's talk about the reels so the sienna 1000 fd here at about 50 bucks as opposed to the 250 dollar stratic as opposed to the 800 to 1000 dollar daiwa exist what are the differences well first up this one's got about four ball bearings i believe this one's got about eight and this one's got about 13 or 14 ball bearings so that's one major difference number two materials i believe this body here is some kind of plastic but it is quite strong and stiff this one is a really light strong flexible material called ci4 it's carbon infused plastic so obviously that's a big difference there you're getting a lot more weight reduction and then the big dog here this one used to be of a similar material to ci4 which they called zion but they've moved to to a magnesium body like the stellas the rotor itself is still some zion material and you know what there's probably about 101 other things that i can go over right now on the differences but i'll do one more difference the third difference and that's with the handle see the handle here versus this handle and that handle these two handles are screwing handles so the stratic and the exist are screwing handles and this one is a hex hexagonal shaft i believe it is i'll show you i'll take that off so i don't want to get too complicated and too technical but basically there's a lot more play in the hexagonal shaft handle as opposed to the screwing ones of these two reels so let's have a look at that now as i get that out of here yeah so i'm just gonna unscrew this you guys see what i mean oh, geez hope i don't break it i haven't done this for you well guys you've never you probably have never seen me make a video using this reel so that's probably why i can't get it out ah oh, it doesn't help that the gyms are closed that was a complete fail guys we couldn't get the handle off i might get this off um, later when I head back indoors and I've got a bit more time but anyway hexagonal shaft here as opposed to see that it just comes straight out see there guys the handle just popped out and you can see it basically just connects onto the handle right there that's my stratic and let's do a one last one last one over here the expensive reels if you ever wonder what they look like ah, trying to do it one-handed it's probably not a good idea you gotta go there we go just like that see that's what the handle looks like that came right out of that there which i just basically just screw on and yeah i'll definitely unscrew this one on a probably unscrew my larger reel which i can show you the hex shaft a little bit later but but yeah guys that hex shaft a little bit more play um yeah so basically on these reels here um those three differences but that last difference with the handle you get a lot more of a connected feel and less play there's 101 things that make the more expensive reels cost that much as opposed to a cheap reel like my sienna but you know in terms of performance if we exclude longevity of the reels you know i've never had this reel break on me on a fish i've got all three sizes it's cheap um cheap and affordable anyone can afford that and the same thing goes for the rods now before i summarize what I think about price versus performance on the reels, let's quickly just run through the rods, what the differences are. You know, like on a on this hundred dollar Fluger Tryon, you can I think you can get it for about 80 bucks. It's it's considered HM45 uh, high modulus graphite. Obviously, that's what you need when you when when you get a combo for fishing. And this one's called the Brim Specialist. I don't know if you could read that. That's a bit upside down. Let me just turn around right over here. That wind is doing my head in, but 
Hopefully it's not crackling too much, says Brim Specialist. So that's why I got this one. It's a brim, it's a brim rod, guys. That's why I got that one. So the first thing is I, I, I'm going through the gear, talking about the blank now. The blank for the, for the next one up, this is the TD Black. This is the intermediate gear. Obviously, you can see the cosmetics are a little bit better. There's a bit of graphite tape here. The cork is just better quality. Um, obviously, this is a newer rod too, so th there's, it's not a direct comparison, but you can certainly still get a Flucatron like this on the market. Um, this one here has the, it, it may or may not say on the, uh, on the rod, but I know what it is, guys. I, I know what it is. This one is the HVF Nano Plus Blank. More sensitive, I could tell you, this is more sensitive than this rod. So that's where the money is going. So the $100 rod, 80 to 100 buck rod, and I'm going to afford that one. This one here, maybe I'd consider upper entry level or in starting of the intermediate level. This one, uh, I, I, I said I got it for about 150 but you know, you can get the, the new ones for up to 220 So somewhere around 200 bucks, you'd say high, high 100s, 200 buck rod. That's what you're getting. And then... This one, the big dog here, the, the Gary Loomis Edge. Now this one is basically, you know, what a brand. Now this is not the latest model anymore, but this is kind of like the brands that put all their technology into the rod. This, this blank here, incredible. The most sensitive rod I've ever used. And in fact, they've even, at that time when they came out with this, um, this handle here, it's like a prototype. It's like a concept, it's carbon fiber. So, it's hollow carbon fiber and it just transmits bites all along the rod to this chamber here which amplifies it that's what i found and that's why i i started using this rod quite a lot i just once you get that feeling of a of a bite it's an it's an addictive one so that's where the blanks go so in terms of carbon content i don't know how to estimate the carbon content in this rod but it's not as high as this one the hvf i think is 98 percent carbon and this one here this one is at over 99 percent i believe and it's that carbon content that gives it that really strong and light feel makes it brittle as well unfortunately so this this rod is a lot more robust the cheap ones can take a lot more of a knock than the more expensive ones which are more likely to snap if used incorrectly and one last thing i run through with the with the rods is the guides the guides so I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to see, but on, 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 on the cheap rod here, what you're getting is you're, you're getting Fuji. So Fuji guides is one of the most reputable guides out there. This is a K-frame, which is why it's rounded on the outside. What the K-frame does is it stops when, when you're casting. Sometimes the line just like snaps on, on the rod and the lure just doesn't fly out and you've got a big tangle. Well, I guess snap is not the right word, but it just gets tangled and it just doesn't fly away from the rod. This is one of those reasons because the line, the braid is going out so quickly that it ends up forming a loop and it just tightens around the guide foot and that just stops it. But because it's rounded, the concept allows the loop to untangle itself during the cast. Now, the material, Alkanite, not too bad. The inserts, so you're paying for the inserts and you're paying for the, the guide frame as well, which I've just explained. Yeah, so now going from the cheap guides of the Tryon to the little bit more pricey TD black ones. Now, actually, this is probably a bad example. This rod's probably not the right one to compare with. I believe they're very similar. This is just an updated model of that guide. I believe it's still Alkanite. But generally, when you're buying a rod that's 200 to 300 bucks, you're getting, oh, you're getting stainless, stainless steel. For example, and stainless steel, it's a little bit stronger and it's lighter. It just allows you to bring out more performance from the blank without weighing it down with a whole series of guides run all the way up the rod, as you can see here. So it gives that nice crispy tip. And then onto the big one, the edge rod here. We've got two styles of guides. We've got titanium. That's the strongest metal that they put on these guides and titanium silicon carbide inserts which is extremely ridiculously smooth. And then up here, we've got a combination of what they call uh, recoils, nickel titanium recoils, nickel titanium guide right there. You can see it's a bit of a weird one. It's like a, it's, it's like wire wrapped around, extremely sensitive, um, very robust. I think you bend them. Now, I didn't want it to be that um, educational, but just, just real briefly, guys, this is just a real brief video about the gear. So now onto performance. Now guys, 
let's talk about performance. What are my thoughts about price versus performance? So let's go through this $150 combo, about a $450 combo, and about a $1,500 combo. So the $150 versus the $450, this combo is not three times better than this combo. It's probably about, just to put a number on it guys, this is probably about 50% better. 50% better for what triple the price now the rod here just a little bit more crisp and the reel a little bit more stable and the drag smoother than this rod here and this reel let's go up from 450 to about a thousand five hundred what's that that's about a triple triple increase is it three times better the answer is no it's not three times three times better in my hand I'd say that the drag of this reel is very comparable to the drag there there might be some minor differences but you, know, you know what actually I, I couldn't really say if there's a difference between the drag of this reel and that reel now in terms of connectedness this one has a little bit more play in the handle this is an older model by the way and this one here is you know I can't fault it it is so so smooth and so so tight rod this one's extra crispy extra sensitive this one does everything this rod can do but it also for some reason has this nice parabolic action and feel the transmission of bites is just that little bit better on this one and it can handle extra light and extra heavier weights more so than this one here right here comes the big question the verdict 450 versus 1500 is this is this one here three times better than this combo here the answer is no i'd say it's probably about a 10 to 20 percent difference at the very most it's 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 the law of diminishing returns guys law of diminishing returns we're not really getting that much more performance gonna end the video here hope you guys found that enjoyable interesting and if you did make sure you smash the like button for me and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video